In this video, I'm gonna break down all the effects and techniques to get this moody 80s lighting all in After Effects. Past, I've covered techniques to get similar coloring and gritty textures in your animations. This one will focus on the lighting and this water reflection effect that really gives it an 80s aesthetic. To start, we need an image to work with, and I'm going to grab one from this video sponsor, Yellow Images. They are a huge library of incredible exclusive assets to make your design and animation easier, which includes over 40,000 high quality premium mockups, 360 degree images, and a creative store full of amazing graphic assets like lettering, icons, illustrations, patterns, textures, presets, brushes, UX and UI kits, and more. Even, even, even more. Yellow Images has great subscription plans or you can pay individually for any item as well. And just for you, I asked, nay, demanded Yellow Images provide a 20% discount and they gave me 100 coupons that you can claim today. These coupons are limited though, so it's first come, first serve. Get your 20% off with the coupon BenMarriott20. Links in the description. I've downloaded this pack of busts and statues because, well, I have no 3D skills. And what's really awesome about this pack is that it's so customizable. You get a whole bunch of angles to choose from, as well as different layers you can turn off and change colors to affect the lighting. It comes as an editable PSD that we can really play around with and adjust in Photoshop. So what I'm gonna say from this is just a still of the bust with a transparent background, a version of it only lit from the left, and a version only lit from the right. That way we've got lots of options to play with in After Effects. In After Effects, I've imported those three images and I have a comp open that will be our main comp. But first let's select those images and drag them onto the new composition icon down here which will create a new comp with them inside it. First, let's hide those left and right lit versions and turn on our transparency grid. Now this bust layer, I actually want black. So I'm going to add the fill effect and change that color to black. And for these layers lit from the side, I'm gonna use those as luma mats. So to do that, I'm gonna create a new solid with control plus Y and let's color this red for now. So it's more obvious. And I'm gonna put that under our luma mat left which is this layer here. And then I'm gonna select its track mat and choose Luma. And if your track mat column isn't visible, just toggle this button down here and that should reveal it. So let's change that to Luma. And now we can see that our red layer is only visible on the white areas of our Luma mat above. And let's do the same with the Luma mat on the right, but with the blue layer. And now you can see it's gonna be really easy to affect the lighting here in After Effects. We can simply up and down the opacity to change how one side is lit but I'm gonna use it to create that water reflection effect. Now I do on this left side to be a little bit brighter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make an adjustment to our Luma mat, not the red layer. So I'm gonna add a curves effect and just move this curve upwards so it gets brighter. And as it gets brighter, it's gonna reveal more of our red layer underneath. There, I think that's good. Now I don't really want the right layer to be so bright. So I'm gonna change that to a dark gray with a fill effect. There, I think that's good. And now let's move on to that water reflection. To do that, I'm gonna work on our red solid and I'm gonna add the effect fractal noise. And let's actually remove the luma mat for a second so we can have a bit more of a clearer idea of what we're working with. So fractal noise just gives us this black and white noisy pattern. And we can animate that by adjusting the evolution property. Let's do that with a simple expression. While holding alt or option on the keyboard, I'm gonna click on this stopwatch and then add the simple expression time asterisk 700. And that expression will just keep increasing that value. So it's gonna be constantly animating. If you want it to evolve faster, you can add 800, 900, but 700 I found just looks most like the speed of a pool's waters rippling. But we're not done yet. This noise looks way too small. So let's go over up to transform and change the scale from 100 to 400. There we are. And this does look a bit grainy. So let's put the complexity from six down to three. That should save some render time as well. We don't need this to be too high a resolution. And now if we turn the Luma mat back on, we get this lovely water ripples reflection effect. And this is fine being in black and white because we're gonna color this in our main comp. And you don't need to have this separated into Luma mats or anything like that. You can apply fractal noise to make similar water ripples and apply it to any layer. And if you're finding these techniques useful, please give this video a like. It really does help the channel and consider subscribing if you'd like more of these videos every single week. Now back in our main comp, I'm gonna drag in our bust comp that we just made. Uh, at the very start, let's scale that down to 40%. Let's keyframe that scale. And then at the end of the comp, let's drop that down to 35%. So now we get a nice low zoom out. And let's maybe reposition that a touch lower. There, 
Now let's add some shading behind it. My preferred method is to create a new solid again with control plus Y. This time let's make it white. Let's put that below our bust. And then with our ellipse tool selected and our white solid, I'm just gonna drag out an ellipse in the middle, press F on the keyboard to bring up the mask feather and then drag that out till we get a nice gradient. Maybe something a bit smaller and maybe more of a feather as well. Let's go way up. And I want that a little bit brighter in the middle. So I'm gonna duplicate that solid again, double click on the mask, scale that down and then reduce the feathering on that one. So it's just a little more tighter in the middle. And doing this across multiple layers with masks and feathers, it just means it's more adjustable and you get a bit more of a natural fall off than you would by just using a radial gradient. Now let's add some final effects. I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer. You can get that by going up to layer new or by pressing control alt and Y. And let's name that layer strobe because we always label our layers. And let's add a curves effect to that strobe layer. And we're gonna make a pretty subtle S curve here by bringing down the blacks and upping the whites a bit, which will add more contrast. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fade this layer on and off to create a slight strobing effect, which will look like the light reflecting off a pool, but also just, just look pretty cool in general. So let's pull up the opacity property with T on our keyboard. Let's keyframe its opacity, let's down at 0% for the first frame. Let's zoom in and just about three frames in. Let's put that up to 100 and then at six frames down to zero. So it's very quickly fading on and off at the start. Now to get that to repeat, we need to add another very simple expression by holding Alt, clicking the stopwatch here and then typing in loop out and then in parentheses and in quotation marks, cycle. So now if we let it play, it's gonna cycle in and out of that strobing effect. Now this is super adjustable. If you want a brighter strobe, just increase the curves. And if you want it to strobe faster, you can drag these keyframes to be closer together. And a really super quick way to adjust the timing of the keyframes is to select them all, hold Alt, and if you select either the first or the last keyframe and drag them, it will stretch them out, but their distance between each other will remain proportional. Just a touch slower. There we are, and we can always come back and adjust these in a minute. Now let's add the very final touches on a new adjustment layer. And first let's add the glow effect. Now that is way too intense, so we need to adjust this. Let's turn its radius way up so it's a lot softer. And now we're gonna control it with the glow threshold. The glow threshold determines whether we want everything to glow or just the very brightest areas. And you can adjust this to your taste. And I think even animating this could be a good transition where the light sort of envelops the whole bust from the sides. I think a pretty high threshold around here will look good for this. And when we play that with the strobe, that's that's looking way more intense. So let's put that radius even further up. There, now that is looking really good. Now let's deal with the banding. So the banding is what you see in this gradient here. It is where a gradient is so gradual that the difference between all the colors is really obvious and it looks like bands or rings. And that is because there's only 255 colors between black and white. And in this gradient, we're using all of them. So the best way to deal with this and a way that helps our 80s aesthetic is to add the noise effect. So I'm gonna add that to our top adjustment layer. Let's view full resolution. And let's put it up pretty high to 10%. So noise adds more colors and it also makes the threshold between the bands muddier. So it looks much smoother at a distance. Now, ordinarily, this is way too much noise, but our last effect is gonna help clear that up a bit. And that last effect is tint. And what Tint does is recolor the artwork by mapping the black values to a new color and the white values to a new color as well. So let's change the white values to red. There we go. And let's map the black to something that's not quite black, maybe a very dark blue. And from here, you can see this is really easy to adjust. You can experiment with lots of different color options and you can even swap the colors as well if you want to go absolutely insane. But let's take that back to red. We don't want to go, we don't want to go too crazy here, do we? And there we have a moody 80s lighting, just using a still image and some neat effects. This project file is available to download for free down in the description. I have taken out the bust asset, but please take a deeper look into the effects and layer setups that I've used. And I'd love to see how you apply these techniques to your own projects. And of course, thanks again to Yellow Images for sponsoring this video. If you'd like to learn animation and motion design techniques, I've got a playlist of some of the best tutorials on this channel for you to take a look at. I'll see you in the next one.